The result of the Indigenous voice to Parliament is clear, a resounding no in all states. The only territory to not vote no was the Australian Capital Territory, with a yes vote of 60.8%. Queensland, where I live, got the lowest yes vote in the nation, at 31.2%. Despite this, Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk is pushing ahead with a treaty with Indigenous people. She said, The Australian people have spoken, and their voice tells me they're not ready. Not yet. Oh, we're not ready? If we're just given a bit more time, then we'll be ready? It's a fairly arrogant thing to say, don't you think? I respect that. They never get it wrong. We are a generous nation, and we extend our hearts and our hands to all. This wasn't the right way. I acknowledge the strong feedback, but that won't stop our efforts to bring justice, reconciliation, and material improvement to the lives of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Okay, so basically she's saying that she's pressing forward no matter what Queenslanders say. The Queensland government actually have a Department of Treaty and Aboriginal Partnerships. I don't know when this department was formed, but it must have been recently, because my wife used to work for them, and it wasn't named this. On their treaty website, they state, Path to Treaty. We're taking steps to prepare Queenslanders for treaty making between Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, the Queensland government and non-Indigenous people. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, a treaty is a written agreement between two or more countries, formally approved and signed by their leaders. Exactly which two countries are we signing agreements between? Australia and Australia? Even the Australian government define a treaty as an international agreement concluded in written form between two or more states or international organisations and is governed by international law. In Queensland, there is also a Minister for Treaty, Leanne Enoch, Queensland's first Indigenous female MP. An anonymous spokesman from her department stated, The Queensland Parliament earlier this year passed historic path to treaty legislation, with the bipartisan support of the entire opposition and will continue. According to the government, nothing is going to stop this from happening. It doesn't matter how you voted. Don't you think it would be fairer to the Queensland people to wait until next election before pushing ahead with this? The next election is only one year away, in October 2024. What's the rush? Why is the Premier so eager to do this now? I think she probably knows she's on the way out and she wants to build some sort of legacy. If you think the opposition is against this, well, you'd be mistaken. Opposition leader David Crisofulli said he is committed in continuing Queensland's path to treaty and truth-telling if the LNP is elected next October. He stated, There should be some truth-telling about what's happened in the past and what they're living through now, and that's what I'm committed to. Noting that he did add, What I don't see is compensation, reparation, right of veto, and talk of sovereignty. None of that's on the agenda. I perhaps naively thought that this overwhelming no result would somehow settle things down a bit, but no, the path of division continues. The national broadcaster, ABC's Triple J radio station, aired a piece by Indigenous rapper Nookie on his Blackout program, where he essentially called Australians racist and called for Indigenous folk to take up arms, metaphorically or otherwise. Well, Wani, I'm Nookie. I'm a proud Yuan man, born and raised in Nara, and this is Blackout on Triple J. October 14 was a moment in history where a dark cloud will forever cast a shadow. I feel like I let down my elders. I feel like I let down the future generations. Last night was the most overt, unconcealed manifestation of racism I've ever experienced in my whole life. Yesterday, they said our pain and our suffering continues. The disadvantage and the inequality continues and in this moment i'm broken but i'm not defeated and regardless of yesterday's outcome there was always work to do we haven't lost a thing we all knew what the outcome was going to be we all know the reality that we live in it's just now more apparent that we ain't licking our wounds today we're sharpening our spears we're the oldest culture on earth and we have survived the white man's world we did not give up this land, and the planting of the Union Jack never changed our law at all. We're going to repeat this message until it rings true. We will not sit in silence. They will hear us as we rejoice as a people, 
and light our sacred fire in the face of their broken promises. Treaty now. Treaty now. He then went on to play Yothu Yindi's Treaty on a continuous loop for one hour. We ain't licking our wounds today, we're sharpening our spears. Another Indigenous ABC employee, Europe correspondent Isabella Higgins, also made some commentary that seemed to indicate that hostility is now potentially on the cards, or at the very least, less cordial interaction between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. So I think this failing, this being rejected so categorically by all Australians, it will change the way Indigenous Australians want to interact with the rest of the country. It will change whether kindness is the best approach. Often in the community, it is well understood that black anger is not tolerated. And so we see leaders pull in their rage, pull in their sadness and constantly use language of generosity, use graciousness to try and appeal to the Australian people. And after this, I think there will be a generation of leaders who have been burnt by this and who won't be interested in doing that anymore. I would not be surprised if more people push towards that message that comes from Lydia Thorpe about not engaging so much with mainstream Australia, not bowing to them, um, challenging the Australian regime, and of course there will be anger. I think even it felt like at times the worth of an Indigenous life was being debated. So I think the message from people like Lydia Thorpe, the message around black sovereignty will appeal more after yeah, this. Leading no campaigner, Indigenous Senator Jacinta Price had her home attacked by vandals who threw red paint in glass bottles at the side of her house after the referendum result. So we thought the voice was over with this no vote. It looks like they're just getting started. 